Okay, let's compute the maximum speed for a car to go around a corner. And there's just some physical intuition stuff that has to be worked out before we start. So I can think to myself, why is there a maximum speed? What happens if you exceed it? Well, if you go around a corner too fast, your tires suddenly break loose and you begin to slide. And that sounds a heck of a lot like a breakaway force kind of problem with static friction. So it actually is static friction that's holding your tires in place on the road. And it's a little bit troubling because the tires are moving. Uh, to clarify that, the tires are rolling. And so the rubber is never slipping against the road. The contact patch is always stationary with respect to the road. So it really is a static friction force and not kinetic. And again, if you exceed that maximum speed, you're gonna see a break loose phenomenon occur. So from this overhead view of the car rounding the corner, I can say that the acceleration vector has to point to the center of curvature. And for any analysis that I do here, I'm gonna call that the positive direction. And in order for the acceleration of the car to be pointed at the center of curvature here, there must be a net force pointed at the center of curvature. So let's get a little different view on things. And the symbol I use for that is to put a little eyeball back here. It's an eyeball with eyelashes. And I want to look at the car from directly behind the car and draw a new diagram. We'll put the center of curvature right here. And I'm going to put the car over here. And there's my tires on the left and right. And my acceleration vector points to the left from this perspective. And again, I'm going to analyze that as my positive direction. All right, so again, Whichever way the acceleration is pointing, I know the net force has to point that way. And I have some good reasons to believe that it's a static friction force. So I, I'm going to put my static friction force vector in here and just call it Fs, Fs. And then some other things I might want to get in the diagram. I know that friction depends on normal force. So I'm going to do a vertical analysis here. And I have mg pointing down for the car and the normal force pointing up. And there are no other forces acting vertically and it's a perfectly level surface. So I know that the normal force is simply going to cancel mg. That stops the car from moving up or down, which makes a lot of sense for this, this flat road. And then I can get into the Newton's second law analysis. and apply F net equals MA. And in particular, I'm looking at the X direction, so I might want to put that as a subscript. And I only have one force acting in the X direction. It's the static friction force. And my acceleration in the X direction, well, in order to move on a circular path with the speed of V and a radius of R, the magnitude of the acceleration must be V squared over R. This is really just a geometric fact about what it takes to trace out a circular trajectory. All right, then I'm going to put in this idea. Suppose we're at the maximum speed right before the tires suddenly slip. That means the static friction force must be maxed out right at that moment. So I can say that this is at its maximum value that allows me to use that formula, mu s times the normal force. And I can plug in that the normal force is mg. And something interesting happens here. The mass cancels out. That means that every car that goes through this curve is going to have the same maximum speed. And that's really convenient if you're making signs to put on the side of the road telling people what the maximum safe speed is. 
All right, and I, I could say at this point we're really talking about V max because the static friction force is maxed out. I'll go ahead and keep that. And let's multiply both sides by R and take a square root. And I get V max equals the square root of mu s g r. And then if I want a number for that, let's see. I didn't state a mu s up here, but I know that for dry concrete, it's about 1. For wet concrete, it's about 0.8. Uh, we'll just imagine that it's raining and say mu s equals 0.8. And I just crunch my numbers real quick. And I get 16.6 meters per second. So if you're used to only thinking in miles per hour, um, you could do a quick Google search. I did this just a few minutes ago and got that this is about equal to 37 miles per hour. So I don't know what the regulations are, but if you're designing signs, road signs, to keep people at a safe speed around a corner, you probably want to go below that maximum value. So you'd probably say 25 or 30 was the maximum safe speed. But anyway, that's how the calculation is done.